now know, of course, the identity of that distributor, but the contract had the identity of the subcontractor redacted, and the subcontractor was Impact, the company owned by Alex Bourne. And I'm delighted to tell you that Alex Bourne joins me on the line now. Alex, what would you like to say? Oh, hi there. How are you? Very well, mate. Good. Yeah, no, I just wanted to clear up a few points that uh, Jolly had brought up with you. Um, predominantly, I think the thing you're discussing is how or why was it necessary for me to appear as a subcontractor um, for this particular piece of work? Just to and clarify, and, and I will give you plenty of time to set the record straight, but the key question, I don't know how much of the programme you heard, is why was that redacted? I don't know. I don't, I don't have that, anything that, to do that, with that. that. That is the central thrust of what we're talking about, but I'm happy for you to put your side of events on the record. Yeah, so I don't know why they did that. Um, well, I've got, just quickly, let me ask you whether you've got any theories. Why do you think they might have done that? I don't know. I honestly genuinely don't know. I had nothing to do with the contracting between the uh, Department for Health and the Alpha Laboratories. They Does it strike you that. as normal that a contract would have a subcontractor re redacted from it? I don't know. I, I have and never it, No Scooby-Doo at all about why they might have removed the identity of your company from the published official government contract. You'd have to ask them. I had nothing I, to do I, with I'd it. love to. Can I borrow your WhatsApp access you could yeah i mean but <laughs> anyway point, enough I, from me let, let me listen to you now alex fill your boots so, so the point was um first of all why uh, i mean johnny morham's point is that this is clearly to obfuscate the fact that i had been given the work and i had an association with, with the health section which he insinuates actually led me to get in the work in the first place um the simple fact is the reason i had to be a subcontractor was because i'm not on the nhs framework which is um, a requirement to provide the nhs supply chain with laboratory consumables, which is what we were producing. Yes. So I wasn't, those are the civil service procurement rules, and that's the end, but that is, it is cut and dry. They just will not let anybody sell things to them. There are lots and lots of different companies who went through distributors. You have to do it that way. Distributors don't make anything. Yes. They simply buy it from one company and sell it to their end customer. What, what was, case, what was their commission? What was um, Alpha Laboratories commission on the £40 million pound contract? How much of that did it's they take? It's commercially sensitive and it's not for me to say. And it's also subject to ongoing discussion. So I, I can't tell you into that. The point, the, the point you're asking, or the point you're trying to make is, uh, that Johnny Moore is trying to make, is was there political corruption involved in the award of this contract at any stage? And the answer to that is quite simply no. When I contacted the health secretary to begin with, and the reason I did it, quite simply put, I had a passing association with him some years before. I hadn't spoken to him for two or three years before that. And when the PPE crisis was going on, one of our machinery manufacturers happened to make mask-making machines as well. And I simply messaged him, having got his phone number from a next-door neighbour, and just put it to him. I said, we can help if you would like it. Had you, also, had, you, had you ever sold any PPE at that point to anybody? No. And you were chiefly involved in the production and, and sale of plastic cups and pizza boxes? Yes, I was. We, okay. we were a manufacturer. So and we you, a, and then I, you got in touch with Matt Hancock to offer him PPE? Yeah, because okay. quite simply, we were sort of, we were, we were, you know, there was a call to action. An industry was asked to, to support the process. You know, Dyson, with with they respect, they didn't ask the place. pizza box industry for, for, for help. But you, no, you cometh the hour, cometh actually, the man, Alex. Yeah, but there are plenty of companies who were not part of the medical consumable supply chain who got involved. And a and lot of them seem to have personal connections to senior politicians, which is not an insinuation, is it? That's a matter of record. And it describes yeah, you. But, yeah, but there's an, okay, so there's, being, there's an association with a senior politician and there's a passing acquaintance with one. Um, which fundamentally, and this is where the record gets set straight. I contacted him about um, PPE. He said, great to hear that you're trying to help. Please message my um, West Suffolk uh, email address, which I did. I then got a reply from his office, which said, go on to the public website, effectively like everyone else, and put your details in there. If you're needed, someone will contact you. I did that, didn't hear a bean back, and that was the end of it. I didn't get involved in PT masks. And we, we basically said, we're a manufacturing company. We have the ability to design. We have the ability to make things, and we have expertise in large-scale production. Ha had, you ever, had you ever sold medical-grade vials to anybody before? No, but the, these aren't medical-grade vials. They're IVDs, which is a slightly different category. Had you ever sold it. those to anybody before? No, but the point is that... So, so just for the record, also, then, you had no experience or background... In, no, I will. I, well, of course I will, and then I'll ask the question. 
Yeah, so the, the quality management systems and the, and the um, methodology and actually the machinery that produces the, the kind of thing that we end up producing, which was test tubes and saliva collection funnels, which we actually designed from scratch, um, are almost identical. The regulation was covered by a specialist that we brought in to do it. We were authorised by the MHRA. We received our ISO accreditations, and after a vaccination complaint, we were investigated by the MHRA, and they said our standards were well above half. Oh, no one's disputing that. All, all I'm interested in is whether you had any track record at all of selling test tubes or sal- sal- saliva collection funnels to anybody ever in your life. No, but okay. then again, we're in an unprecedented situation. I don't, I don't see the relevance of it necessarily. I understand your point. Yes. Why is this guy doing it? Well, I, I've it's spoken to people who, I, I, I'm just for, so that you know, because I'm, I'm sure you're far too busy to, to listen to this program on a regular, regular basis. I hear frequently from people who had a lot of relevant experience in precisely and specifically these areas of provision who couldn't get arrested by the Department of Health and certainly didn't have um, WhatsApp access to the Secretary of State. But I mean, you but know, I, I don't think anybody that, listening that, would blame not, you. I don't think anybody... Correct. Oh, but forgive me, carry on. This, no, that's not correct in this instance. People, I mean, we were... There was an industry group where it was everybody from a one-man band to AstraZeneca who were being asked, you know, what can you do to help? How can you, you know, what, what kind of things can you produce? Um, there were massive supply chain okay. issues, obviously. Suddenly, the world requires all at once, you know... A, thousand x what was produced ordinarily and as a result we were all pitching in doing things if people had the product available it would have been bought and absolutely that's touching but not true i've spoken to people who had ventilators that were available and, yeah, and, I and dealing with ventilators. No, 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 i know but we're, we're talking about the supply chain in general now it's perfectly plausible that there was nobody in a position to provide test tubes or saliva collection funnels until you started manufacturing them for the first time in your life i, I know it's commercially sensitive but is, the numbers are correct are they the, the contract itself was in excess of 40 million pounds yes yeah, that will i mean it's a matter of public record yeah what was your turnover the previous year what, the previous financial year? Yeah. Uh, it was just under a quarter of a million. So could, would you mind saying that again? Just under a quarter of a million. But again, this is your... your I, I don't... Do you want to talk about the, the actual issue at hand here, which is what Jolly Moore is talking I, about? Again, it's a radio phone-in. The, 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 the topic of conversation is defined by the presenter, so you knew that when you okay. rang in. So, so, so what was the profit on that £40 million pound contract? Uh, zero, actually. You didn't make any money at all? No. Okay. I mean, this is the point. And the facts of this case... You've, 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 you've said that on the public record now, Alex. I know and have. Okay. Don't worry, I'm very aware of what I'm doing. Okay. The fact is that we set out to do a good thing. We offered up our services, and we had to pivot a business that had fundamentally lost everything overnight, along with a lot of people. But I determined not to do nothing and try and offer any help I could. The case that's been put forward at the moment is quite simply that Matt Hancock has behaved in a corrupt manner. and I have no, one, no one has used the word corrupt except you. Well, no, you absolutely have. I mean, you've been talking about corruption for the last half an hour. No, possible so corruption. No, no one has said that Matt Hancock has behaved. I mean, this is semantics, but for the record, I certainly haven't said that he's behaved in a corrupt manner. OK. I think a lot of people would disagree with you. But the point well, is... Luckily, it's recorded. I've, had, I've received work. I've received work um, from the Department for Health as a result of my association with Matt Hancock. When Matt Hancock had absolutely nothing to do with it, I hadn't even spoken to him about what we ended up manufacturing. So, um, so that, that is the question then, is, is, is why did your company, with its track record in plastic cups and pizza boxes, get the call back when many other companies that didn't have so any we connection the, at we, all? We weren't called by the Department for Health. What I did was I, I put on the supply portal the fact that we could make some plastic um, consumables for, for labs. I read in the newspaper that the head of the British Institute of, Med- of Biosciences had said that there will not be a chance of hitting the um, target in testing capacity because the consumables simply don't exist. Um, when, so I then just put, I effectively put my details into the supply chain um, online portal, didn't hear anything back, and so I started... Um, attack it in a different way and started going around all the distributors who sold products predominantly for people from abroad. Um, and, and then, and then up, came the, up came the three melons 
and the contract arrived. I, I know you've already answered this question, but it is by far the most interesting element of the story. And, and uh, I, I nudge you towards perhaps just a bit of speculation. And I, I, I register your, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the country for all the hard work that you've done in this field. Um, but why do you think they removed the name of your company from the contract? I really don't know. I, I, I can only assume yeah, go on. that it's something to do with some form of, com- of confidentiality and civil service rules or commercial confidentiality. Because, and if I it mean, isn't, uh, I mean, what would be left then by way of... Because Alpha Laboratory's name is, is all over the contract. Quite right. But the thing is, I'm, not, I'm personally not bothered about admitting that I've had an to do with it. When I was phoned by the journalists this time, you know, uh, a year ago... I told them everything that had been going on. I've never hidden what I've been doing. I don't think no one's accused you of anything, actually. It's it's more the... Well, they have indirectly, haven't they? I I don't think so. By the insinuation that you... No, because they're implying that Matthew Hancock has somehow manipulated the civil service to to make provision for us to provide... Manipulated is quite a strong word, but the redaction is the key here, Alex. What is the charge, then, if it's not that? What is the charge? Influence might be the word. Perhaps it's a lot lot less harsh than manipulation. But the key question that neither of us can get past, but but it's important, I think, that you understand this. You're familiar with the phrase, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. So why did they hide it? That's why I'm here now. So why did they hide it? I have no idea. Well, there you I, go. I, so I, that, that is what journalists do. Okay, well, that's great. But the point remains... That, that is the question that we need an answer to. Hand that's hand the hand question hand that taxpayers, hand. of whose money £40 million pounds made its way into your company, they deserve an answer to. But no one is accusing you of anything. Well, they are, because if they're accusing me of lobbying Matt Hancock to make sure that I get a contract doing something... But if you did a bang-up job for Britain, that doesn't really matter in the great scheme of things, and when the dust settles, there'll be absolutely no case to answer. But the case to answer at the moment is why did they keep the name of your company out of the public eye? If they've got nothing to hide, they've got nothing to fear. And we're agreed. It's very hard to come up with a reasonable answer to that question. But we're united, Alex. We're united in our hope that there is a reasonable answer, I think, to that question. You might think that that issue is the only one that matters. Or I can tell you for free that when you've had your name bandied through the press, associated with with political wrongdoing, having tried your absolute best and utmost to do what you could for the nation at the time, and I'll refer you to the first email I ever sent to Matt Hancock, which said, I'm not looking to make my millions from this. I'll quite happily work for the government and associated agencies for free for the duration of the pandemic because I want to do something decent. My background... And I applaud, I applaud you, and I, I do things. stress. Yeah, please let me finish. Of course, you, you carry on. Finish. Of course. And then to have to be referred to as the pub landlord... Um, you which, were. by the way, is one of the most immensely snobbish things I've ever heard, is if a pub landlord couldn't be capable of doing this kind of thing. But you were a pub landlord, then, just to be clear. Yeah, I am a pub landlord. Okay, but the sorry. point is, the, the I stood up and I did something during a difficult time. Yes. And having your name dragged through the press when I haven't done anything wrong, nor is Matt Hancock in this instance, and I can absolutely stand... I can, I'm looking forward to going to whatever official um, inquiry there is because I've kept every message and every email... I, I, I stress, I stress again, no, no one's accused you of actual wrongdoing. There is just a lot of uh, questions to be answered about why yeah, some companies... Oh, no, 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 let me finish, yeah. Alex. I, I gave you the same courtesy. There are a lot of questions to be answered, and they're not to be answered by you because these decisions have nothing to do with you about why some companies uh, ended up in possession of these very lucrative contracts. Companies, for example, that went from a turnover of a quarter of a million pounds to excess of £40 million as a direct consequence of a single contract uh, via government through, a, through a, um, an official distributor. There are a lot of questions around why some companies ended up in receipt of contracts like that, while many other companies didn't. That's all. That's all that's happening that here. That may very well be the case. And you can't answer then, that question, and no one's, ex- no one's expecting you to. Well, what they then need to do is go and find companies who have received contract as a result of influence. Absolutely. No, 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 no nothing to do with influence. Just, just told repeatedly. The just the question of why. Story, yes. The only reason there's a story is because five years ago, Matt Hancock came to open the pub as the local MP, and a now NHS nurse took a picture of us behind the bar and he put it on his website. Well, no, That's because the story, the story didn't end there, did it? But, 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 I mean, luckily, we've established over the course of the last 15 minutes that the, the, the sequence of events that followed on that, that felicitous photograph. Are, are you happy, Alex Bourne, that you've had an opportunity now to put your side of the story? No, I'll just leave it with this. I mean, we, 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 this idea that um, politicians, particularly, in a very, very difficult time, and people who are politically motivated as well, yes. I understand for 
the um, importance of um, the examination of public life and uh, the need to make sure that probity is observed at all points and that things are fundamentally carried out in a correct and decent proper manner. But what I cannot cope with is the fact that we as a company have been used as a football in a game between political parties, no matter how much I've tried to um, uh, speak and give my side of the story properly to people, it's either been misinterpreted or um, misrepresented, particularly by people like Jolly and Moreham. And I'd just like to thank you for having me to give my side of it. It's my pleasure entirely. For the record, I'd like to clear one thing up as well. My grandmother was a pub landlady, so there's no snobbishness whatsoever involved in me using that descri- I from you, James. descriptive I from phrase. You. No, I'm just clearing it up for the record. It, it certainly wouldn't have come from me. Alex Bond, thank you. Thanks. All the best to you. Bye.